Hey, I'm Demi. I am the host and digital editor for Indie 1023, and I am here with one half of Big Red Machine with Aaron Dessner. How are you doing? Hello. I'm good. Thanks for having me. How How's you? your day going? <laughs> um, it's good. It's my daughter's 10th birthday, so early, like early morning, because I had to celebrate a nice have birthday breakfast and then take her to school with with so that was sort of early but i'm good good you know Six. then she gets to celebrate with her friends and yeah 10 is the big milestone that's the double digits i know i know it's kind of crazy hard to believe congratulations that's an exciting day <laughs> yeah. but also congratulations because you just released your second album with big red machine which is super exciting how do you feel since that project has been put out into the world? Um, I feel very happy. I mean, I feel the music is very dear to me and it's very personal kind of, you know, it just feels like Big Red Machine is this very, yeah, it's this loose concept of it's sort of a band. It's sort of my project is sort of a duo with Justin, and, but it's, you know, I lead it, but he's like the, wingman and then it includes uh, so many of our friends and it's sort of you know wide open collaborative laboratory at times um but i feel like it's a family so to me to put this out it feels you know special and i can listen to it with such you know i really enjoy it which is strange because a lot of times you make music and you're so close to it that you can't it's hard to enjoy it anymore with somehow with this one um i can put it on and just feel like this feel it warm like satisfied happy feeling and drive too fast although I shouldn't drive too fast but anyway yeah so I'm, I've been feeling good it's funny that you bring up collaboration because Big Red Machine is still quite new to our listening audiences so right now we're playing Phoenix and we're playing Renegade and when we get messages from some of the listeners after them doing like their own research it's like oh wait this is Justin Vernon and Aaron Dessner that's so cool so how would you explain that that collaboration started out? I mean, it's really like goes back to this, you know, Justin and I, we wrote a song together called Big Red Machine in 2008. Uh, I, I hit him up over MySpace, <laughs> basically, because I was producing a charity record to benefit AIDS and HIV charities. The record was called Dark Was the Night. And this was like when the National was touring Boxer and, you know, <clears throat> Barack Obama was running for president. It was like that time. And, and um, we uh, kind of hit it. We like got in contact over MySpace and he wrote two songs for Dark Was a Night. One was called Bracket Wisconsin and the other he wrote to this piano sketch of mine that I had called Big Red Machine and Justin wrote a song to it where he interpreted Big Red Machine as a human heart. And really Big Red Machine is, was the nickname of the Cincinnati Reds baseball team where I'm from. And I was born the year that they won the World Series in 1976. So to me, it was like this sports metaphor that I just happened to call the, the, the song file Big Red Machine. And then he interpreted it as a heart. And it just became this like kind of interesting way to start a friendship and then it led to a lot of things and later you know we founded a festival together in his hometown called Eau Claire that was very collaborative and we got up at Eau Claire and improvised as Big Red Machine and called ourselves Big Red Machine and like just from that it kind of became this project we would do live and then it led to us writing songs and then, then now there's two records and it does feel like there's this weird life to this project. Yeah, I mean, the spirit of collaboration with how Big Red Machine started has definitely fostered your both of your careers within Big Red Machine because the collaborations have been just astronomical. Like you worked with Robin Pecknell from Fleet Foxes and Taylor Swift and Alanis Morissette. So how did those collaborations for this new album um, come about? Um, well, <clears throat> It was, um, to be honest, there like most people on the record are people I've produced records by. And a lot of those people are people that I met because of, you know, being open, but also collaborating in these environments where, you know, like Justin and my brother and I covered one of Sharon Van Etten's songs 
10 years ago in Cincinnati. And then I ended up producing a record by her. And then now, and then she sang on national records. And then now she sings on, you know, Big Red Machine. And a lot of it's like that, like just very, I like to be able to count the number of collaborators I have on two hands or maybe three hands, you know, but like, I think it's, um, it feels like a community. It feels like a family. And it is maybe a product of Justin and I and other friends, like trying to find ways to live, you know, like to, shine a light on people we love or, or like, you know, and learn from people that you have, that you, you know, want to work with or, 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 or bring things together. Um, so, and it's a way to grow. I think collaboration is a way for musicians to keep evolving and learning from other people. Cause at some point you do hit a wall where you're like, I've been doing the same thing or I, you know, I, how do I change, you know? So for me, Big Red Machine has, it's like how I learned, I feel like I wouldn't have been able to make certain records that I've made without having first done the work I've done in Big Red Machine, interest, you know, which is interesting. I love that you said that you can count the number of collaborators like on like both of your hands because this album feels that way. And we know that you've collaborated with Sharon Bennett and Taylor Swift before. And so this new album for Big Red Machine really feels like you guys are sitting in the studio and just kind of having like a jam session and you mentioned that it sounds really warm and feels very warm it is a very like warm flowing kind of album so I really love that that has been fostered and really thought about because yeah I think during the pandemic there, it's thrown so many different things <laughs> against the wall and seeing like what sticks and just throwing out emotions and seeing yeah. what kind of collaborations you could have in a limited amount of space and travel and all that kind of stuff but this album doesn't feel that way so were pieces of this made during the pandemic or have you worked on this album with your collaborators years ago and now it's just kind of coming together it's kind of both like i think half of it sort of did exist in some form you know before the pandemic really descended and was pretty deep into it and there were songs like Reese and Latter Days and, you know, some of those songs, Brycey existed before the coronavirus kind of invaded our lives and changed, changed everything for a while. But I think um, then I, you know, I've, like, like, like everyone, I've learned to work remotely. And at some point I did start trading music again with people and sending files around and that is how a lot like the second half of the record was written that way so you kind of feel both you know like how long do you think it's going to last is the album title and it could you know it can refer to the pandemic although it really is more about like relationships and and um you know innocence and, and sort of uh creative streaks and it's kind of like it refers to many things but um but you feel i feel like this the looming apocalypse, the glow on the horizon or something where you're like savoring life maybe, or this is like the last waltz or something. Although I, I'm hope I'm a hopeful person, but like, I feel like there's some element of that. Like it feels like a, a goodbye or something, even though, or a hopeful goodbye, like see you down the road kind of thing um, is like the feeling in it. So. So I said that we were playing Renegade and Phoenix right now but are there standout tracks for you that felt really personal on this album? I mean, there are, there, there's so many. I mean, I think the song 822 AM is an interesting one because it's like, Justin was born at 822 AM and that's why the Bon Iver record, I think is called 22 a million, the, you know, his, his uh, third record, but the, the, the song 822 AM. I wrote it just as kind of like a, he wasn't doing so well at that, that when I wrote it. And, and I think he was setting his alarm to go for a walk at 822 AM every day. And I don't know, I wrote this music and said, 822 AM, you know, go for a walk. And, um, and then he improvised his vocal melodies to it and played some guitar and other things to it. And, and um, JT Bates and Brad Cook play on it. And, but then, my friend Ragnar Kjartansson, who's an Icelandic artist, and I wrote words to Justin's melodies. And then Ariel Engel, who's this Montreal amazing singer called La Force, and she's also in Broken Social Scene, sings to it. And it's just this very collaborative song, but like the core of it is like worrying about a friend. And you still feel that like 
um, you know, it, one of the lines is like, I'm right here if you ever need me, essentially, whenever I'm needed. And, um, and it comes after the song Hutch, which is another song that's also about a friend that I lost, Scott, Scott Hutchison from Frightened Rabbit. And so there's sort of like sides of two sides of a coin, like a friend you've lost and, you know, a friend you want to look after. And just that feeling of like, are you doing enough for people you love is kind of the idea. Yeah. Um, I've been to Bonnie Bear shows. I've been to the national shows. And the one thing that I noticed about the fans that go to these shows is they emote, emote so much emotion during these, during your shows, because your songs really do touch on some very sensitive topic, topics, but very personal topics. And it is very felt throughout the audience. And so I'm wondering how, when you go on tour, do you think that this is going to reflect upon its listeners? Like, how do you want to convey that during a live show? Um, well, I think with Big Red Machine, we'd love to perform it almost like a week of performances in the same place like a mini festival where we film it and we kind of like make it like a, a happening kind of thing. So maybe. That'd be so cool. Yeah. But and I think we'd need to have, so if you're listening promoters, we need somewhere to do it. But I think it's like, we need to bring as many of the singers and musicians together as we can and make it kind of like a last waltz or a, that kind of feeling of just like, whoa, you know, cause now there's all these songs and, I think it'd be really special to pull it off in a in a very communal way. Um, but yeah, the feeling should be emotional. It should be like, I think the music is kind of, rock. it's like you can feel, maybe you feel me rocking myself, to you know, soothing myself. But then it's also like a little wild at times. And, and I think that combination of like, I find music very soothing, but I also find it very cathartic. So um, hopefully it's both. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Thanks. And for everyone watching, go and stream. How long do you think it's going to last? The second album from Big Red Machine. And once again, thank you so much, Aaron. I appreciate your time. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. And All if right. you want more sessions from home, make sure to go to indie1023.org and head over to our YouTube for all of our interviews and performances. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.